Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. And in this video, we're going to talk about the five senses. a lot a lot of things going on around you right now all around you all around in your room or outside in your neighborhood in your city there's all kinds of things going on around you how many of those things including by the way a really handsome guy who's on a computer right now and you are watching him or a tablet or a phone whatever whatevs how many of those things are you aware of and how are you aware of those things? How does the knowledge of said things transpiring all around you make it from the world around you into your head and so you can think about them and be like, oh yeah, he's right, he's way handsome, or whatever. Well, we have these uh, abilities called senses that allow us to detect what is going on in the world around us all the time. And, well, not all the time, I guess. Not while we're sleeping, because we kind of turn our senses off, sort of. Uh, but while we're awake, and if we're paying attention, we can be aware of things that are not directly, you know, uh, with us, like right in touching us. But even that is a sense, even touching is a sense. So what are the five senses? Obviously you're familiar with these and you could probably name them, all five of them, I would bet, without me even saying what they are. So go ahead, fine, be that way. Don't need my video, whatever. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you anyway. So the first sense is, well, and they're in no particular order, but the first sense that I'm gonna talk about is sight or vision. And uh, so we have these things called eyes, and they are on our faces. And we use them to see, uh, as long as you are not blind, and there are people who are and can't see uh, for a variety of reasons, but for those of us who can, we use our eyes to see. So there, the light from our environment bounces off of an object, and it takes on certain characteristics like color, uh, and brightness and so forth and then it reflects back towards our eyes and we perceive with our eyes we can tell based on the light and how it's been altered by the objects that it's touched what the light is touched we can see that off in the distance there is a skeleton with a slytherin tie and way awesome science glasses Are those science glasses i can't remember I have on him. Those are just regular glass. Anyway, so uh, we can see because of the way that light interacts with objects and then interacts with our eyes. And that message is uh, transmitted through nerves that I have attached to the back of my eyeball that go straight into my brain and that uh, transmit that message so that my brain can process what I am seeing. The second sense that we'll talk about is hearing, the ability to hear sound. And we can hear because of the way that uh, sound causes things to vibrate. So any time there is a substance like air or water or even solids, it, that substance is made up of molecules and atoms and things. And the atoms, the molecules will vibrate whenever something hits them or, you know, uh, touches them. So when I am speaking, I am causing the air around me to vibrate and those vibrations move out away from me from one molecule to the next to the next in a wave. We call that a sound wave. And eventually the waves next to your ears start to vibrate. 
And then they, uh, because they are vibrating, they vibrate little structures in your ears. You have little tiny bones in your ears and an eardrum that vibrate. And then that vibration is uh, translated into sound, or well, into messages that travel through your nerves, into your brain, and your brain perceives the sounds. And so we can hear a variety of sounds, including words that we use, that tell us what's going on around us. If you hear footsteps, then you know somebody is coming down the hall. And probably you can even tell who it is, because if it's heavier, then you're like, okay, that's my dad. And if it's lighter, maybe you're like, okay, that's my little sister. Uh, or if it's like really fast and there's a little bit of jingling, you're like, that's the dog because I hear its collar. So we pick up clues that we don't even really have to think a lot about that help us understand what's going on around us. What's So that's two. What's the third one? A third one, not the third one. How about the sense of smell? So in the middle of your face, you have this, this funnel thing, this schnoz that has two holes, right? And it is called a nose. I know, shocker, you had no idea that that was there, but surprise, you have a nose. And inside of your nose, there are lots of little uh, sensors that are designed to pick up scents that are floating in the air, microscopic pieces of things that are floating through the air. So when you smell brownies cooking, that's a little tiny microscopic brownie bits that end up floating in the air. And they're just wafting through the air. And then you breathe in and you breathe out and you breathe in and you breathe out. And eventually you breathe in little microscopic pieces of brownies. And they interact with the little sensors in your snout. And your snout translates that into messages and sends it through the nerves into your, where you already know this by now, right? Into your brain. And your brain says, ooh, that's a good smell. Or if somebody says, pull my finger, and you are unwise and you do, then you'll get a different smell that won't be so great. And your nose will say, that's a terrible smell. Or you'll be in the, trapped in the car and you won't, you'll have to roll down windows or whatever to escape the horrible smells. So and another one would be taste. And taste is mostly in our mouth, but also a little bit in our nose, believe it or not and a little bit down our throats, a little tiny bit. Uh, you can't. You have little receptors work very similar, closely related to the ones in your snout that, that uh, detect smells, that detect flavors. So when you put things in your mouth, you can be like, this tastes fantastic. This squid tentacle that I am eating is so delicious. Or you can be like, this is gross, worstliest thing ever. Can't believe I put this in my mouth and I'm going to spit it out now. Blah. Uh, and taste helps us to know whether or not food is good and if it is something that we want to continue eating. And then the final, the fifth one would be the, our sense of touch. We can feel things. Even if our eyes are closed and our hearing is turned up, we have earplugs in or we are blind and deaf, which some people are, uh, and we can't smell and we can't taste. That'd be miserable, but we can touch things and we can still learn a lot about objects by touching them. In fact, babies depend on their sense of touch more than any other sense when they are tiny. They do a lot, most of their learning. That's why they're always putting things in their mouths because their mouths are very sensitive and they're filling them and learning about them. So we use these five senses to learn about and interact with the world around us, with the environment and to get clues that help us to thrive in our environment. And we are not the only animals that have senses. Uh, m many other animals have senses. Some have more senses than we have, and some have fewer. But we, human beings, we have five. We have five senses that help us to get clues about the world around us. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for. 
if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science students. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos, and they're much more targeted, and those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now, going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.